as I mentioned before, I definitely had to find my niche. Only then I was able to find the lenses that I needed. Lenses, lenses, lenses. Oh boy, we are in trouble. <laughs> No, really, but it's actually not that scary. It definitely seems overwhelming when you begin because I know when I first started, it was definitely overwhelming. I was scared and I was like, oh my God, I don't know what I need to shoot yet. Which is why it's so important to find the niche in photography or videography or just something that you are a creative in. I know that it can seem very overwhelming when you are choosing the lenses that you need. So I want to share with you with some lens choices that you should invest in before you buy the ones that you think that you need. As I mentioned before, I definitely had to find my niche and only then I was able to find the lenses that I needed for what I was doing. Since my first camera was a Canon, I actually bought a 50 millimeter lens. Although it's really great and I do love the sharpness, especially in portraits, the only disadvantage of that is that you have to zoom in and out manually. So if you are stuck in a small room, you're probably not going to get a very great portrait unless you're super far away but it is definitely great if you're doing a little bit more closer to macro but i wouldn't recommend it for macro although it's very great in aperture it does give you a lot of chromatic apparition which is like the purple outlines that you'll see on the subject what I'm about to show you is all general purpose lenses for Nikon, Sony, and Canon. If you want to learn more about types of lenses, I recommend Cole'sClassroom.com. He has a great list of resources there as well. Let's get into it. So the one I mentioned before is the 15 millimeter lens. Now this again is great for all general purposes and it's really great for portraits. It really helped me with sharp portraits and it is the gateway to prime lenses. If you are on a budget, this is cheaper than most. Although it does give chromatic aberration and it does have outlines, nonetheless, it's worth having. If you guys don't know by now, I do a lot of music events, right? So this lens is for a Canon as well. It's a Tokina 2470mm lens. This is a great option if you're doing night photography, low light photography, or of course, concert photography. And it's considered one of the best lenses for concert photography. Because of its wide range of vocal lengths, this is great to have in your camera bag. Now the next one that I'm going to talk about is for a Nikon. It's also a 24 70 millimeter lens. Now this is great for events or weddings. This is great if you want to get close to the action and fill the frame. And this last one is for a Sony and I actually own this lens. It's a Sigma 24 70 millimeter lens. Now I know that I mentioned a lot of 24 70 millimeter lens, but this is definitely a very versatile lens that every photographer should have just because because it saves you money in the long run and it's all general purposes. Now, most experienced photographers do have a 24 70 millimeter lens. It gets great aperture and it's sharper photos. This is definitely my go-to for everything. You can never go wrong with the 24 70. Now that you know a little bit about lenses, I hope that this saves your wallet and your banking account. And I encourage you to keep shooting. I do have similar things like this. Just go to lensesbeauty.pictures slash resources. And don't forget, beauties, when you like, share, and subscribe, it really does help the algorithm. But most important of all, it helps people like you find people like me to help you guys out. All right, until next time, beauties.